that's what my lovely little boy has grown into. <laughs> oh, I had some fashion sense, see? Oh, and, and look at these. <laughs> my little booties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I want justice for my son. I look to everyone in Sri Lanka for the sake of my son's life really that was taken away so quickly from him at the age of 37. It just be, uh, because of applying for private treatment center they can't open and it's really illegal. This is the truth. Very well I know and all this has happened. We found sometimes drugs on the floor and all those things. So I have a doubt somebody brought this again to the rehab. Somebody brought drugs from outside to the rehab infection center. Exactly. To have received her son's death certificate on the day she brought him to the world, exactly 37 years ago, was the hardest experience for British national Marian India Bear. Her son Charles Jeevan Bear, who wanted to cure his addiction to ketamine, chose Seasons Lanka, the Sri Lankan branch of an Australian resort-type drug rehabilitation centre that was relatively cheaper. Less than five weeks after him joining the rehab program, Marian received news of her son's death in their ancestral country Sri Lanka, which she and her son called Paradise. With excessive advertising in Sri Lankan media calling themselves the country's first internationally recognized drug and alcohol treatment center, Seasons with their local partner, the renowned security firm Certis Lanka, managed to bring several foreign nationals, including the young Brit Charles. Little did they know that this live-in rehab was illegal as it had no license to operate in the country. The illegal drug rehab located in Vaskadua, Kalutara ran its operations for almost five months with absolutely no regulation by the government. They even had the then chairman of the National Dangerous Drug Control Board, Professor Ravindra Fernando, as the chief guest at their opening ceremony. However, days after the death of their patient Charles, the rehab was abruptly shut down. All the other addicts were repatriated to their respective countries. The Australian staff fled Sri Lanka, while the personal files of the Sri Lankans employed at the rehab went missing. You won't have to wait 23 years for another video. video. <laughs> like, uh, I'm making that a promise right now. <laughs> like
thing is that when I saw the <laughs> saw what I saw uh, is that my son, having lost my son, I will not have you know be a grandmother, you know, um, have a daughter-in-law, you know, um, and see my son flourish uh, with his family. And all this has changed since the, the 2nd of January for me. I used to call him Barrow, and um, nothing can describe how I felt when I found out what had happened, and then the manner, the violent manner in which it happened, because um, I always thought he would grow old. I could always envision him as an old man, teaching the young ones, teaching wisdom. And I was very much looking forward to uniting with him and having a family. That was always my plan and his plan. Um, I hadn't get, gotten to see his face in so long because I came from Australia and the first time I got to see him was um, he was dead and his face was cold. And, um, yeah, I still have nightmares about seeing him like that. Um, so it's wonderful to be with his mother because I can sense him in her and his expressions with her. So it's lovely being with her, but watching what she has to go through, losing her son, um, that's something else. And that's something I'll never get to experience to have children and be what it's like to be a mother. Um, she's amazing and um, I think Sri Lanka is a beautiful country. And I really hope that the people here that are working on the case can bring swift justice because he was a man that really loved life. He loved everything about it. He relished it. He made you excited about being alive. He always looked after everyone around him more than himself. Um, and he never deserved to die in a violent manner. He deserved to die an old man with all his family around him. It's open uh, by a very grand way. Uh, yes. I think uh, the con drug control board people also came. Chairman. Chairman. Yes, chairman. This is the uh, Sri Lankan sponsor, Mr. Sankar, and uh, given uh, this, his son was in charge for this uh, season. Yeah, from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. It was a grand uh, opening. Yeah. yeah. And uh, these big people also came, mm -hmm. but without license we run uh, all these days. They, uh, they told us they have applied for When we inquired about the license application, the executive director of Sirti Sri Lanka, Jeeva Kavija Singh, told us that obtaining license was a long process which required reviews site visits even after the opening and more and more reviews. However, what he said proved to be false as the current chairman of the National Dangerous Drugs Control Board, Dr. Laknath Velagidra said otherwise. According to him, as stipulated in the Drug Dependent Persons Treatment and Rehabilitation Act No. 54 of 2007, it is illegal to open a rehab before the license is officially issued. He said applying for a license never grants any sort of approval to start operations as a drug rehab. Uh, there should be a licensing for uh, maintaining a private treatment uh, center for drug addicts according to uh, Act 2007, uh, number 54 Act uh, regarding the uh, private treatment and uh, rehabilitation. So uh, 
no one can open the rehabilitation center just after applying for that so as a uh, uh, regulatory authority we have a uh, whole authority for control these private treatment centers and issuing license so uh, so it just be uh, because of applying for private treatment center they can't open and it's really illegal reasons manage their operations without having a license did you notice any sri lankan government authorities so is it in the seasons one day it's happened it's they said all of a sudden they said say hi guys you have to go and enjoy your day in a hotel at a protopitia uh like that so then i asked for the uh there's this guy in a uh, accountant i asked why is that so he said the drug control board is coming to get the li- uh, give the license so therefore they wanted to show this place is empty clients i can't say patients i have to take this clients to the uh, hospital for to see a psychiatrist so every time they are asking me id so they did i falsely ask this uh, management i need a id card to show any, if anyone ask i have to show uh, to my introduce myself but they until i left the place they didn't give me a id card. how did you manage to bring patients to the hospitals without having a license or ids Uh, it was a very uh, difficult time i had uh, each and every patient i am the one to to the hospital counter so the owner he knows this uh, this sri lanka people so he allowed me us to go without id but in the i had the uh, always i have the problem with the consultant psychiatrist she always asks where is your id uh, what you know about this patient uh, like that in australia oh yes to what extent they involved in the sri lankan management so this is a combined uh, management they, that's what i got to know uh, they are the sri lanka is uh, given the place i think uh, the both the money is going half to sri lanka half to australia that's what i, I know about what is similar incidents like charles while you work in uh, in the sri lanka Incidents. So the other incidents you are asking. Uh, incidents are there. So many incidents are there. In the previous interview, you mentioned about a patient who had jumped from the wall. And exactly. Can exactly. you tell me about that uh, incident? The Sri Lankan, the his parents brought him uh, to the rehab. He was not willing to stay at all uh, because they they also spent the according to this boy they have spent a lot of money. so he was very violent i can say it's very violent he wanted to go from uh, season and one day at the lunch time he jumped from the wall and he is gone there from yes, to his it is lele to his home then his parents and the brother in law somebody came and asked for the he invest the money but he couldn't get into anything parents talked to me and they asked me to help them I'm very helpless. I can't do anything. I'm not in medicine. Did you notice an improvement uh, in Charles during the time you treated him? Well, the from uh, I'm the one giving the medicine. Few weeks there was, but again I saw he was depressed. He's uh, we are giving the medicine. but that much not it the few weeks i said for a big before few weeks he was okay then he came slowly slowly down and we found sometimes we 
uh, drugs on the floor and all those things. So I have a doubt. Somebody brought this again to the rehab. Somebody brought drugs from outside to the rehab. Exactly. Miss uh, Kirli, how this came? She said, uh, I, I, I also have, I have uh, the same question, I have to ask you the same thing. She's uh, in charge. In charge, you know how tablets came? Yeah. 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 So, night, uh, the morning, I found uh, no valiums and all those things was everywhere. I told you. She tried to put me in a bubble, like, you know. She wanted to say this drugs came from the, uh, through the patients. Given a allowed to go off without no, 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 no. Uh, anyone's embassy. And the, uh, if it is there, was any uh, substitution drugs or the tablets are there, because these people are, mm. once you come to the, he or she come to the rehab, they will check each and every place. Each and every place in the body and then has the, uh, their packages. Okay. I have been working for uh, mental hospitals, Colombo uh, National Hospital, and Hango de Muleria and National Council for Mental Health. So with your experience, you know that uh, this job is a very serious job that only professionals of course, can yes, handle. It, it, this, is, this should be a professional can handle. It's always there should be a doctor uh, and this is we are playing with the life. You think mm -hmm. that the staff at Season Sri Lanka mm -hmm. had skills and experience to deal with drug addicts? means except myself and Maduki uh, and the accountant others uh, the cook cook others all are past addicts okay so they are they are they have their moods also sometimes right? it's, it's, Vijay Singh had denied the security firm having had any involvement in the Seasons Lanka program except the rental commitment. Nevertheless, the registration certificate of Seasons Lanka Retreat Private Limited mentions Jeevaka Vijay Singh as one of the four shareholders and initial directors. The rehab registered as a limited liable company under Companies Act No. 7 of 2007 had 40 shares. The company certificate indicates that out of four shareholders, three were from the Certis Lanka group who shared a total of 30 shares. The fourth shareholder was the head of Australian Hader Group, Richard Smith. In August 2017, a new director and three alternate directors had been appointed to the rehab. Even among them, the three alternate directors are in the current management of the security firm. Annually, over 35,000 Sri Lankans die due to alcohol and tobacco abuse. Many people are being diagnosed with mental disorders due to the use of drugs such as cannabis and heroin. At present, the private rehab industry is growing in Sri Lanka although it is largely unregulated and ruinously expensive. As the demand for addiction treatment is high, tougher standards, better screening and greater oversight are needed to improve patient safety. Fortunately, there are uh, more than 12 private treatment centers without uh, proper um, treatment methodology and uh, licensing. And currently, uh, under the Defence Ministry, we are uh, uh, trying to regulate these uh, private treatment centers and we already asked them to uh, register under the uh, Defense Ministry uh, to the uh, National Dangerous Drug Control Board.
whether these 12 or more unregulated drug rehabs are peppered with breach of rules and human rights violations, whether they bleed untold millions from patients' pockets and are finally failing to set addicts on a path of sobriety, are questions that need to be answered before another life is lost.